Yeah, it's about 65 degrees. It's kind of windy. But no hurricane. 16 miles it is. I think I may have spoken too soon about the hurricane. I've never seen the river this high and I've definitely never seen it this choppy. Hey guys, how's it going? Scott Lapier here again. I just want to start off by apologizing for the delay. I wanted to have this video up on Thursday, but I had my first real, I guess, hiccup, you could say, in my training program. Um, Wednesday night, for whatever reason, I just couldn't get to sleep. I was up pretty much all night. I got maybe two hours of sleep, but by the time I woke up, I had a pretty fierce stomach ache. And then on top of that, I was working a double. So, came home in the, in the middle of the day, slept, took some Pepto, went back to work, and at the end of the day, just came home and just totally had enough. Which also means that I missed a nine mile run and a lifting workout. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to make those two up or whether I should just skip them all together because everything else has been going well. So I'm still slated to run the Clarendon Day Double, which is the 5K at 8 and then the 10K at 9. Expect a video about that. It'll be similar to the Spartan Race video. It'll just be me filming kind of what happens as we go along. So other exciting news is I've actually been selected to be a product tester. I'm not 100% sure how much of the test I can discuss in terms of the company, the model, the shoe I'll be testing, the history of the product itself and all that. But all I can say though is that the goal of the test is very similar to the goal of my training, which is just logging high mileage. Again, I'll get some clarification of what I can and can't talk about. Obviously, this is my first time doing something, so I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to get in trouble with the company I'm testing for because I do like their products a lot. They've been one of my favorite activewear, athletics, apparel companies. Again, I just don't want to screw anything up. I just don't want to get into any legal trouble. I just don't want to annoy anybody that works for that company. Yeah, I'll have more details about that. And for members of the FT fam, my family that are watching, if you guys want to know more about it, just ask me in person. Anyway, speaking of working with people at Fitness Together, um, I recently redid my breathing test, which you guys saw in the last video. And I've been using the results of that test to kind of go back to the drawing board with my diet. Previously, I hadn't really been tracking what I was eating. And like I mentioned in the last video, I was having some issues with energy. I was having some issues with fatigue, you know, digestive issues like I had yesterday. And yesterday just seemed to be kind of like a perfect storm of all those issues I've been having all at once. So it's kind of spurring me to pick up the pace to really get my feet set. And hopefully by the end of this weekend, I'll have everything laid out in terms of my diet and I'll have everything in order to be tracking it. So I sat down and spoke with Claudia, who does a lot of like nutrition consultation. She's the one that typically administers the breathing tests. She gave me a very rough outline of what I should be doing and how I should be eating for this marathon, and specifically for my training leading up to it. It was very informative. It was a whole bunch of things that I myself hadn't thought of. It was also a couple things that I just was overlooking for God knows what reason. And to all of our clients watching this video, just be sure to set up a Nutrition Together session with her. It's well worth the time that goes into it. Remember, she has a master's degree in not only nutritional wellness, but also nutrition and human performance. So nutrition is how it relates to athletic performance, such as running a marathon, and wellness is in just losing weight and being healthier. So to say she's qualified is a bit of an understatement, and she really, and she really helped me clarify my thoughts, and she helped me kind of come up with a couple ideas of things that I should be working into my diet as well as the kind of targets I should be hitting with my diet. And just to stress this point guys, how I'm developing my diet is a lot of my own experience. It's a lot of research I've done. There's a lot of performance contemplation that's gone into this. I'm just going to show you guys how I arrived to the setup that I have and the setup I'm going to try to follow. So I took the total daily expenditure from my breezing test, which was an estimate, and added in any kind of other activity I do. So more often than not, I bike to work. So when I added in about how many calories that burns and then subtracted about 200. So the plan is to run a very small deficit so that way I'm not underfeeding my body, but I'm still not eating enough to where I'll begin putting on body fat. That number is somewhere in the neighborhood of 3,100 to 3,200 calories on a day when I'm doing no exercise aside from just being on my feet all day and biking to work. Then I broke that down further into the macronutrients I wanted. I chose um, a breakdown of 40% carbs, 30% fat, 30% protein. 
just because previously in the past I've I typically tend to do better on a higher fat and higher protein diet. I'm not quite sure the reasons for that, but this is one thing that I've noticed that no matter what other factor I'm working on with my diet, what seems to make it work the most is a low, low carbohydrate, especially low refined carbohydrates, higher protein and higher fat. This is all individual, this is all from my own experience. It may be different for you. Seek nutrition counseling before you decide to try anything like this. So moving into days when I'm typically lifting and running in the same day, according to RunKeeper on a typical run, so say like a short run, a run with some speed work, even some of the middle distance runs I do like nine miles, so anywhere from like a, a five to nine mile run or somewhere in between incorporating speed work, I'll typically burn anywhere from about nine to 1200 calories on that run itself. And then when I'm lifting, it's typically somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 to 250, depending on just how quickly I get through the workout, how high my heart rate stays during the workout. So combining those together, you get about 12 to 1300 calories. Adding that to the other number, it's anywhere from 4,200 to 4,500. And again, I'm erring on the lower side to try to run a very slight caloric deficit to lose some body fat. So that puts me at about 4,200 calories per day where I'm running and lifting. And then the day I'm not lifting when I'm running, there's usually a long run involved. And longer runs, I can burn anywhere from 1,600 to 2,200 calories. So what I would do then is add that number straight to my total daily expenditure and just make the adjustments accordingly based off the percentages. But the reason why I chose 40% carbohydrates is you still need to keep that high to spurn recovery, but also to help preserve your glycogen stores. It's pretty much just using common sense. What your body is mostly operating off of during longer endurance exercises, like especially the long runs, is you're in a state of what's called aerobic glycolysis. It means your body's burning primarily carbohydrates that are stored in your muscles and your liver. And this usually lasts for about an hour to maybe an hour and a half at the most. After that, your body has to begin breaking down fat, which is why a lot of runners tend to hit the wall. Also the reason why a lot of goos, a lot of the power gels, a lot of the power bars and things that runners will eat either right before mid-race or typically high in carbohydrates, it's just to provide more of that quick energy. Thank you guys for watching. Those are my considerations for how I'm gonna develop my diet to allow for not only adequate recovery, but also adequate fueling for my training runs and everything leading up to the marathon. Again, you guys, remember to fund the run. Um, the link to my donation page will be down below, as well as some of the forum posts and all the other research I did for this video. Again, thank you guys very much for your time. And to take us out, here is some footage of me and Gabby from Labor Day weekends. Yeah, for Labor Day this year, Gabby and I decided that we were gonna help out uh, one of our friends and dog sit for them. Oh, there he is. Yeah, was he trying to play it cool right now? Like he wasn't just looking out the window? Yeah. I think we may have lucked out because he's been like this for about two hours. I mean, he's still alive, but yeah, he's not very excitable. Yeah, all we had to do to get him out of bed was say food. <laughs> so we've been hanging out with Lewis uh, for a couple hours now, but we're just for the night, we're going to bring him back to our place. Come on, you big lump. Come on. Hey, Lewis. <laughs> He's like a big baby. Look at him. You comfy, Lewis? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Where are we going? Look so. Lewis, when we said make yourself at home, this isn't really what we had in mind. It was extremely fun getting to babysit Lewis for a couple of hours, but we gotta bring him back. His family's almost home. Come on, Lewis, where's the elevator? Let's go.